The Blandian Sergeant is the main infantry option of Blandia. I think most players tend to forget about this unit because quite frankly it doesn't seem overly terrible or good. As any other infantryman, the role of the Sergeant is to tank projectiles, fight infantry and most importantly be a reliable source of medicine experience. The most iconic equipment of this unit is in my opinion the cape. A lucky two thirds of the Sergeants are going to be granted a legionary cape. That by itself brings 16 body armor. The other Sergeants have been naughty and Lord Darter decided that the only way to set them right was taking the cape away from them. They get nothing. No even a scarf. Since we're talking about capes, the sergeants bring an average body armor of 44.7, with two out of the three templates consisting of the aforementioned legionary cape and the white tabard over male oberk that looks strikingly red, while the second template will only bring the white tabard over male. I know it's called white because it has the same color of the kingdom banner, but why don't they just call it tabard over male at this point? Madness. Anyway, this will rank the sergeant in last place when it comes to body armor, a good 5 points behind 7. When talking about the head armor, the sergeant ranks 6th, with a value of 46 brought by the wizard helmet over laced coif. When considering head plus body, the sergeant will rank last with a value of 91, but they will gain 1 position when considering all armor types. When talking about the equipment, since this unit has 3 templates, let's start with the items that are always there. The first is the shield. The reinforced Oaken Kite is a 128 length and pretty durable shield that covers the tanking duties quite well. While the second item they always bring is the long fine steel spear. A 78 run speed, 32 damage with a length of 235. Like any guy that brags about their 8 incher, the sergeants are simply overcompensating for something. This spear is way too long to be of any real use for the banner of the AI that you will more than likely watch in abusement or horror as they miss any horseman that comes remotely close, or simply bounce off their armor because they stay too close to their targets. In an eventual melee situation where these guys get stuck using these instead of the one and the weapon, they are as good as dead. No way they can land a strike with their length and their abysmal speed. Now let's talk about the ever-changing sidearms. The sergeants will bring two good sidearms. These are the Fury Fullered Cavalry Mace and the Spiked Battle Axe. These two weapons, despite being a mace and an axe, work in quite a similar manner and are good for similar reasons. They both have very good swing speed, they pack some decent raw damage and are both short. And then there is the Rigged Arming Sword, given by the way to the same guys who like the cape. Their third is probably having a laugh somewhere. <laughs> Now that we are done with the equipment, let's talk about the juicy test and stats. Overall, the sergeant ranked 6th, with a KD of 4.68 and a KD of 60.18 versus low tiers. Ended up losing 622 units out of 3500, or roughly 18%, and ended up with a casualty chance versus low tiers of 3.52%. Also, they ended the careers of 2914 custom battle soldiers. Now let's go ahead and list the pros and cons. This unit has the worst armor set out of all infantry units. Two out of three of their sidearms are good, but one of them is not quite there. The shield is good and does its job well. They like any form of versatile weapon like javelins or axes, making them very one dimensional. Their spear is one of the worst for foot units. Their melee performance overall is quite awful. I give this unit a 0.5 out of 5. If you are fine with dismounting and using cavalry as main infantry, there is close to no reason to bring these guys in the Vlandian army, and there is even less of a reason to seek them for a composite one. Still, a more valuable option than the vanguards or the vulgars for 1.8. These guys have never really impressed me in any way, and Vlandia took an hard punch in the gut from 1.8. Be ready, because you might not like what's coming up next. The Vanguard is one of the two cavalry options Blandia has to offer. Some players love this unit, and others hate it. The Vanguard can cover a few roles. It can be a support flanker by charging from the sides or dismounting, or shocking the enemy once the battle is in full swing. For cavalry, I think the first thing to cover is not their lance, but their general armor instead. In the case of the Vanguard, it brings a very good 52 head armor, 
brought by the wizard helmet over male coif. Not only is a good piece of armor, but it looks cool too, and it will rank the vanguard tied in second place among cavalry units, and third overall. We all know Vlandia is the cheapest faction. If a unit has something good, it must be followed by something atrociously cheap, and the vanguard is not different. Their body armor is in fact just 34, brought by the red tabard over male hauberk. This will rank the unit last among cavalry and 28 overall. Werther didn't even want these guys to have a scarf, come on man. Before talking about the barding, I want to bring to your attention the troop line. Outside of the tier 5, no other unit has decent horse armor. This makes leveling up these units very difficult since good horse armor can make or break a cavalry unit. For the vanguard, it's all good on that side, since they bring a Vlandian cursor protected by a 52 horse barding, called half male barding. This will place the unit in the middle of the pack at 5th among cavalry. The horse is in my opinion a nice balanced option, not too fast and has a decent amount of HP. When considering at plus body, the vanguard ranks tied at 6th, with a value of 86 but loses one position to number 7 when we consider all armor types. With the armor out of the way, let's talk about the equipment. The main weapon of the vanguard is the Knight Lance. It has 83 trans speed, not too bad. The length is 184, a decent length for a lance. The damage is 37 and it can couch as well. Overall, not a bad option. But this unit is still going to struggle because of the AI and the fact that it's a normal unit so the poor arm value is not inflated. Talking about the shield, the vanguard brings a reinforced cavalry kite. It has 430 HP and a length of just 78. Cavalry tends to have way smaller shields than infantry but this is way better than the Azrai or the Batanian ones. For close quarter combat, the vanguard brings a rich arming sword. It's the same as the sharpshooter, but since the vanguard is a cavalry unit, the length is not a problem there, although it quickly becomes one in sieges or in dismounted situations. Now that we are done with the equipment, let's get down to the stats. When considering the efficiency against archers, the vanguards finished 7th, with 2 8 places and 2 7 places. They finished with a KD of 2.59 and a KD of 8.46 versus low tiers. The vanguards lost 28.48% of their units and their average casualty chance against low tiers was 13.07%. When considering efficiency against spearmen, the vanguards ranked 8th with 1 7th place and 3 8th places, with an average KD of 3.1 and a KD versus low of 78.79. The vanguards lost 26.14% of their units and ended with an average casualty chance versus low tiers of 18.13%. And finally, when considering the melee efficiency, the vanguards ranked 8 once more, with an average KD of 3.58 and a KD versus low of 23.26. The vanguards ended up losing 38.71% of their units and averaged a 5.68% casualty chance versus low tiers. The data is self-explanatory, so let's go ahead and list the pros and cons. The helmet is very good, not only for the class, but in general. We can say the same about the body armor, which is the worst in the class. The horse is quite good, but what makes it great is the barding. They carry no throwables, making them one-dimensional. The sidearm is quite bad and it's reflected in their melee performance. Because of that, it takes away another potential playstyle that is the flank and dismount. It also makes them bad in sieges. The shield is not bad for cavalry and outside of the vanguard itself the line brings no horse armor, making the line a pain to upgrade. My final score is a 0 out of 5. This unit not only is far worse than the other cavalry option in the faction, but it brings close to no upside to any army. They are very one dimensionally, not only because they lack throwables, but also because they are among the worst tier 5 in melee when dismounted. I really recommend avoiding this unit entirely and build your army around some other cavalrymen. But hey, I guess you are going to enjoy your time when facing this entire troop line next time you find Darter across Caldradia. The Blandian Vulgar is one of the two options we have when we decide to upgrade the Billman. Wait, two options? What's the other one? No, God, please, no, no! <clears throat>
The Voyager is the only option we have when we decide to upgrade the Billman. As the only worth to mention shock troops of Blandia, the role of these guys is to kick the low tiers to the ground and act as anti-cav while doing so. The most iconic piece of equipment of the Voyager is their one-handed weapon, because it has absolutely no reason to exist. For real though, the most iconic piece of equipment of the Voyager is the Volge. A mighty swingable polearm that brings 76 speed, 188 damage, and a reasonable length of 143. The Vulge is not only the shortest polearm out of the three polearm wielding shock troops, but it's also the most reliable at hitting. With a base damage of 198, on paper it's enough to one shot. Unfortunately, we are on 1.8 and the troops are incapable of using any long weapons. The speed is a bit slow, but no abysmal for a two-handed weapon that carries that much damage. Despite the weapon being good, the armor of this unit can be further from the opposite. With an head armor value of 38 Point three, it ranks as the worst tier 5 unit in the category and 23rd overall. This value is brought by three different helmets, the Picked Helmet over Male Coif, the Picked Helmet over Lace Coif and the, you guessed it, the Picked Helmet over Padded Cloth. How couldn't you know that? It's so popular and fashionable among units these days? Come on. Thankfully, when it comes to the body armor, the Vulgar brings the same two pieces that combine for a value of 36. This will rank the unit in 5th place and 25th overall. The pieces in question are the cherry stained white tabard over male hauberk and the fashionable scarf. When it comes to the head plus body, the Vulgars rank tied at last with a value of 74. The other troops is a tier 4, so they are the worst tier 5, but they will gain two positions to number 4 when considering all armor types. The last thing we have to talk about is a set of Francescas. Three axes are never amazing, but they are something. And for a faction like Blandia that has no throwables, it's unfortunately not very synergic. Don't expect to find much value out of these ones. Now that all of the equipment is covered, let's talk about the stats. The Bourgeois rank 5th among shock troops, with a total KD of 2.64 and a KD versus low tiers of 14.2. The Bourgeois ended up losing 1111 units out of 3500 or roughly 31.74% and ended up with a casualty chance versus low tiers of 15.28%. Also, they ended the careers of 2932 custom battle soldiers. This unit has some terrible armor, like most of the Blandian units. The weapon is good on paper, but it can carry such a poor armor set, and like the veteran Falksman, it suffers from the 1.8 AI that doesn't allow the troops to keep enough space between them and the enemy, ending up in a law of box strikes. They are a versatile unit, but no amazing. The number of projectiles is not enough to have a real impact, and they have a one-handed sword that they will never use. The list is quite short for these guys, but I don't think there is much else to add. My final score is a 0.5 out of 5, and like the sergeants, there is little reason to use them in 1.8. If you are playing on previous patches, these guys are easily a 3 out of 5 at least. The Blandian Sharpshooter is the only ranked option of Blandia. For many players, this has been one of the best units for a long time, as it handled the shooting duties with impressive efficiency, while being a solid melee option when needed. But is that different in patch 1.8? As someone who streamed a speedrun conquest on version 1.7, I can tell you that these guys were the main reason I ended up conquering already in just 15 years, while not executing any lords in the meantime. The role of this unit is simple. Shoot until you run out of bolts, then join the melee and perform like you are a tier 4 infantryman. For ranged troops, I like to cover first the number of projectiles one can bring. In the case of the sharpshooter, it's one bag of heavy bolts, carrying 18 shots. Since they carry a shield, crossbows tend to only be given one quiver. This makes them run out of arrows very quickly so use them carefully. The crossbow is a bound crossbow, simply regarded as being the best crossbow in the game, it has a 63 reload speed, 100 damage and 100 accuracy. This is a very solid weapon to start with and it makes this unit a deadly option when it comes to shooting. Unfortunately, like all crossbowmen, 
This unit also suffers from the lack of damage increase Captain Perks and the non-existing scaling of the crossbow skill. Next up, we have the most iconic piece of equipment of this unit, the Pavis Shield, a tanky 560 HP blast door with a length of 118. One of the best shields in the game, it covers pretty much the entire unit and can be very effective at tanking projectiles. When engaging in melee, the sharpshooter brings a rigged arming sword. It has 86 swing speed, pretty slow for melee, 76 damage and it's on the long side for a sidearm with 113 length. As most sub 90 swing speed melee weapons with this much length tend to be, this weapon is not great and Vlandia being cheap on their units armor doesn't help either. Looking about the armor, the sharpshooter has 28 body armor. Yeah, they're low, I'm not even kidding. Combined between the main shirt and the hood, ranking him last in 7th place among archers and last across all 30 plus tested units. Differently from the rest of Blandian infantry, the sharpshooter brings a pretty good element for their class, with a value of 42 brought by the Catonat over male coif. This will rank the sharpshooter in third place among archers and 22nd overall. When it comes to the combined value of head plus body, the sharpshooter ranks tied at fourth with a value of 70 and keeps the same position when we consider all armor types. When considering the shooting efficiency, the sharpshooter finished 6th, with 3 6th places and 1 7th place. This is mainly due to them having to join the melee before all enemies were killed, showing how a lower amount of errors can impact a long enough fight. Anyway, they ended up with a KD of 5.3, and a KD of 17.41 versus low tiers. The sharpshooter lost 61.22% of their units and averaged a casualty chance against low tiers of 48.5%. When considering efficiency under pressure, the sharpshooters finished third, with three third places and one second place. In this case, everyone had to join the melee at one point, and it shows the upsides of crossbowmen in this scenario. Anyway, they finish with an average KD of 2.53 and a KD versus low of 35.57. The sharpshooters lost 55.4% of their units and ended with an average casualty chance versus low tiers of 33.5. And finally, when considering the melee efficiency, the sharpshooter ranked 4th with an average KD of 2.18 and a KD versus low of 11.6. The sharpshooter ended up losing 34.14% of their units and averaged a 12.88% casualty chance versus low tiers. As expected, this unit struggles at shooting because of the lack of projectiles, but picks that slack up in the melee situations. Let's go ahead and list the pros and cons. The body armor of this unit is bad, but the helmet is solid for the class. The sidearm is not great, the shield is amazing and makes this unit good at tanking projectiles if needed, the melee performance is neither great nor bad, as most crossbowmen, the lack of projectiles can be felt in longer battles, and since the armor buffs, sometimes it can take an extra shot to kill an infantryman. But they are the best crossbowmen when it comes to shooting. They can handle very well under pressure, making them great at protecting squishy archers, even if they're not the best crossbowmen at doing that kind of job. Since the entire line brings crossbows, they are far better at lower tiers than all of the other ranked lines. My final score is a 3.5 out of 5. It's a very good unit for smaller battle sizes and when brought in large quantities, but it quickly drops off in quality if you run just a few of them or you have to fight large buttons. Overall, there are better quality options for ranged troops, especially on the shooting side of things. But these guys perform very well from the get-go and can quickly win you a lot of battles while you are building up some archer captains. As it stands right now, they are one of the few Vlandian troops still worth seeking in 1.8, but the armor buffs did make them a bit weaker than they used to be. The Burner Knight is the second cavalry option of Vlandia. Many players think of this troop as being the best cavalryman in Calradia. Not only that, but this unit is the peak of the Vlandian noble line. Those units reach one tier higher than standard troops and can only be recruited in castle villages or converted from mountain bandits. Other than that, they tend to generally have better gear than standard troops and way better weapon skill. The Burner Knight brings 221 ended, 90 more points than standard, 260 polearm, 130 more points than standard, 
and 200 riding, 70 more points than most tier 5. As you might know by this point, cavalry in this game doesn't have it easy, and in order for a cavalry unit like the banner knight to perform well, heavy armor will be required. The knight's role is to flank and shock the opponent, either by dismounting or not. For cavalry, I think the first thing to cover is not their lance but their general armor instead. In the case of the knight, it brings a solid 50 head armor brought by the full helm over male coif. Despite the value being very good, this only ranks the knight tied in 5th place among cavalry units, and 11th overall. The body armor is another solid 53, combined between the brigandine over male and the cooler hoodie also known as the Green Hood. This will rank the knights in another 5th place among cavalry and 14th overall. When it comes to the horse and barding, the knight rides a Vlandian Cursor protected by a reinforced chainmail barding that brings 64 horse armor. As we said in the Vanguard video, the horse is quite balanced. Nothing sticks out as a huge negative or positive, while the barding they wear will be enough to place the banner knights in second place. When considering head plus body, the knights ranked 4th with a value of 103, and they keep the same position when considering all armor types. With the armor out of the way, let's talk about the equipment. The main weapon of the knight is the knight lance. It has 83 trans speed, not too bad, the length is 184, decent length for a lance, the base damage is 37, and it can couch too. The polearm is alright, and it's the same as the vanguard, although if you know how trusting spears work in Bannerlord, you know they are generally bad weapons. Talking about the shield, the knight brings a reinforced cavalry kite. It has 430 HP and a length of just 78. Cavalry tends to have way smaller shield than infantry, but this is way better than others we've seen. For close quarter combat, the knights have three different templates each one with a different weapon, two of which are very good and one who isn't all that great. Starting from the good ones, we have the full red maze and the spiked battle axe. Those weapons are good for similar reasons, as they are both short and fast, while being able of delivering a decent enough base damage. The length, unfortunately, makes them a bit trickier to use on horseback, but you're going to see why they're good later. And if you're thinking that for once, Darter wasn't going to save money on his units, let me present to you the rich arming sword. A menacing, cheap and reliable one-handed weapon that brings 86 swing speed, 76 base damage and a whopping 113 length. Best weapon this unit has to offer. No, it sucks. Um, it's the worst they bring. It's low for a one-handed and too long. The damage doesn't even transfer all that well too. Now that we are down the equipment, let's see where this unit ranked across cavalry units. Hopefully, we don't need to chop another Vlandian unit. When considering the efficiency against archers, the knights feel finish 4th across cavalry, with 2 3rd places and 2 4th places. They finish with a KD of 4.77 and a KD of 119.04 against low tiers. The knights lost 15.14% of their units and their average casualty chance against low tiers was 1.6%. When considering efficiency against spearmen, the knights finished 6th among cavalry, with 1 5th place and 3 6th places, with an average KD of 6.77 and a KD versus low of 144.01. The knights lost 13.1% of their units and ended with an average casualty chance against low tiers of 2.87%. And finally, when considering the melee efficiency, the knights rank first among cavalry, with 3 first places and 1 second place. With an average KD of 9.04, best KD across all the 30 plus tested units, and a KD against low of 218.57, third best across all units, the knights ended up losing 17.48% of their units and averaged a 1.24% casualty chance versus low tiers. Surprisingly enough, it looks like our beloved banner knights are a far better infantryman than cavalry. Anyway, let's list the pros and cons. Their general armor is very good. The horse armor is also a huge plus. They carry no throwables, making them a bit one-dimensional. They carry two good sidearms and a bad one. Their melee performance is not only the best out of all cavalry units, but ranks in the top three across all units. This opens up for a dismount strategy, where you flank the opponent, dismount and hit from the side. They are good in sieges, the shield is good for cavalry, and most of the line is well armored. My final score is a 4.5 out of 5. At last, 
this Vlandian analysis ends on a sweet note, with the Banner Knights making a name for themselves among the best troops in the game. You can dismount these guys and use them as infantry instead over the Sergians, and you can keep some to use as cavalry over the Vanguards. Only issue with these bad boys is that they have no range option, and despite being a nice pure lancing option, they are far from the best performers in the area. We can argue a 5 out of 5 should be the vote, but considering all of these and the fact that they are a noble troop, I think a 4.5 is more than justified. Attention. Attention. My final score is a